Hello and welcome to uh, the second episode of Dyson Design, or episode one. And again, I'm joined by uh, Tyler from the channel Flimzombie One. And today we're going to talk about game prep. Welcome, Tyler. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, could be cooler as usual in Oklahoma, but could be a lot yeah. worse. So yeah, I feel your pain. I'm not a guy from the from the south, so I'm pretty happy in the north when it's always like somewhat cool, but. At the temperature I find hot, you would probably wear a jacket. <laughs> so Tyler, tell me, what kind of a GM are you when it comes to prep? Um, I think to some extent it depends on the system. Um, but uh, I think if it's because you know there's the there's the one kind of prep that I think you absolutely have to do, which is know whatever system you're running, right? Because if you don't know. You do absolutely. There are people that say, you know, oh, I do zero prep, and it's like zero prep. You don't even read the book. I consider that's you know part of prep is is knowing the rules. Um, but uh, I would say it kind of depends. I don't do a ton of prep. Uh, if I've been going with the campaign for a while already and i kind of know i know the players i know their characters i know the direction things are headed then i don't need to spend a ton of time prepping but if it's like a brand new uh a brand new campaign or, or they're starting a, an entirely new uh, you know adventure or job or what have you uh, I'm, I'm gonna be doing more prep um so you, you, con you consider actually like learning the rules because like oftentimes like when I because I say like I'm like a very low prep GM almost no prep but I, when I say that I don't consider like learning the system learning the rules as part of the prep. Uh, oftentimes I play games that I'm already familiar with the system. I'm really talking when I talk about prep. I really talk about plot hook, storyline, and whatever or like map, end out stuff like that. So, and that this is it, is that for you dependent on system, or is that like something that uh, that the system you're gonna play, or is it, or is that like always kind of the same? Yeah, to some extent, because you know I'm not gonna have a bunch of if I do handouts, it's because the uh, the people, the characters in the game are getting the handouts of something. Like if they get a map, somebody's giving them a map in the game. Um, so usually I, I don't have people just randomly running around handing out maps. So uh, they they don't get a map or something or they'll have to make their own map. So I don't need to worry about preparing that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's true. Uh, hey, Rick. Hey, Crafting Gamer. Uh, lots of people Urban in here. Right away. Cool. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Nice seeing you, everybody. Uh, Thank you for joining mm -hmm. us. <laughs> um. But I sort of consider learning the rules parts of prep because you decide um, that's where you're deciding, you know, what optional rules you're using, what um, what rules you may want to cut, what um, session zero should probably be a different topic, but that could be considered part of your prep as well. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, hey, crack home. Because like I I find like one way when like uh, sometimes I say learning the rules can be seen as part of the prep that is like fairly legit is like when you if you know that the adventure like for example is going to go on uh, the, the party is going to go on a boat maybe mm -hmm. your system has like boat rules mm -hmm. maybe you didn't really take care to, to, to take it too much put too much attention to it beforehand because like it wasn't relevant but now those mechanics could become relevant so maybe it's time to freshen up or Maybe even sometimes learn them for the same time. Same thing if you want to go mm -hmm. underwater, you want to go in the north. Maybe like this environment, like when if the environment mm -hmm. is going to become harsh, and there's going to be like environment like a survival rules, then mm -hmm. maybe it's time to freshen up on those kind of rules. So I guess mm -hmm. like yeah, in that sense, yes, I would agree. Yeah, looking at the rules would be part of the preps. Like uh, for example, um, there's quite a few like third party supplements that are like system agnostic for mm -hmm. uh mass combat um because most tabletop rpgs don't do mass combat very well because they're just not designed for mass combat as a concept so if you're not using mass combat on session one but all of a sudden the you know the players have decided all right we're going to go fight this you know robber baron and all of his men just head on at once you know yep. uh, most systems aren't good at you you know being five people fighting a hundred people 
Um, mm -hmm. So you may need to, part of your prep may be, ah, oh, crap, okay, how am I going to handle, how am I going to handle this, right? Are we going to just sort of, are we going to handle that as like one really strong entity that has its own issues? Or, or are we going to, you know, uh, look at the, maybe, it, maybe your system has optional rules for it. Maybe you're uh, going to use a third party thing. So I consider that like the very baseline, like, the session zero of prep, if you like, is, yeah. Uh, yeah, look, no, knowing, that, knowing that, what that, the rules that's are a fair, use, yeah. That's a fair point. Like uh, like I said, it's not something that I usually come, but yeah, it, it makes sense. Yeah. So mm. looking oh. at your rules, if there's something that's going to come in the session mm. that you expect. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, when yeah. you, like, let's say, let's start from the beginning. You start mm -hmm. a new campaign. What kind of prep you gonna do? You know, what where where are you gonna focus your attention? Like, what kind of like in that sense? What kind of like do you come with a? Do you mm -hmm. are you some, a guy that uses a lot of like pre-made setting and then you have to learn all about it? You make your own mm -hmm. setting. Is it sometimes one color and sometimes the other? Uh, yeah. Do you build the whole world, draw those map, uh, know why the name of every NPC in every village? Where you go with that? Yeah, I like um I like doing both. I like pre-made settings because pre-made settings uh, won't, they allow for less prep but they also require a different kind of prep because like you said you have to read through uh, it and make sure you know especially if you've got a player there that's already played in that setting and may know more about the setting than you do you don't want to yep. you know run into an embarrassing situation where you have the uh oh that's that's not right what are you talking about that doesn't make sense at all so uh, yeah, hey, uh, your your prep there needs to be um, respecting the fiction and understanding the the fiction of the world. Um, whereas if you're building something from scratch, th that takes a little bit more work for me. I enjoy it, but uh, you know it, that for me is more doing. Am I just making something that is? Uh, <laughs> to, to borrow a thing we were all making fun of a while ago uh, are, are you just making skyrim but with guns are you just making you know <laughs> x, are you just doing x but with y hey crispy but that, yeah hey, crispy and i seen you mm. but there's nothing wrong with doing like oh i'm doing like x with y like actually mm. i think that's a, i think that's a good uh a good approach you know i'm not i i like i i i'm, I'm open about that i like my mm. usually my rpg is a thing fairly mundane I like that when it's like X. Oh, it's medieval time, but with this one change. And then we explore what this one change implication. But, you know, I find a lot of people like try to make those world and they, it all starts with X, but, but then they go X, but Y, Z, alpha, beta, and, and, they, and they add like a bunch of things to the X. But all those things are added in a very superficial way. They don't think of the implication of all the things that they added. I much rather do X but Y, but really go deep in the Y and make it like consistent. And that's that's the kind of world I like to run. And I talk also about about prep before. Like I'm a very low prep GM. Usually I'm gonna mm. have an because and keeping the world mundane or keeping the world with in something that we're familiar with. Let's say we do Star Wars and we all kind of know what Star Wars is, then you can go in a and it, it takes a lot. It, it makes a lot of the work for you, and I find that reading modules or because or taking pre-made setting is often more work because of that. Because now you have to learn all to read all those books and learn, learn all those detail, and oftentimes also I'm disappointed by those pre-made world because mm -hmm. like they added all like those element, those extra element, but in a very superficial manner. Mm -hmm. So I tend to stay away from that. Yeah, I think I think there's definitely like a fine line to be tread where between um trying to be uh creative for the sake of being creative, you know, try trying to just be absolutely, you know, we oh, we can't do anything even similar to what's already out there. We just have to be super weird for the sake of being weird, but yeah, they're not really thinking about um what any of that means or they it's weird for the sake of being weird, not for because it sets up something interesting in the world. So mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's that's also a, a decent point. Um, I must admit, yeah, that you're not. Um, for for me, I have to think and make sure I'm not just making something 
that I've already done before. And mm -hmm. that that it's actually if I'm making a new world or a new setting that I'm not just doing something that I've already done before. Right. Because if we're a, a we fall into patterns as humans. Yep. So we just, you know, it, it can be a, a sort of strip away the detail and see if you're just doing the exact same thing that the last campaign was. That's like my baseline when I'm making something new. Um, and then. Like I said, it's tricky to talk about without talking session zero, but, you know, see, part of my prep is what do my players want to get out of the campaign? What uh, sorts of characters are they playing? Um, and that can be the mechanical stuff, right? Are they playing, you know, everyone has decided they're going to play pirates. Uh, okay, well, I'm not going to prep them a landlocked country for <laughs> for that. Then that That's going to influence how... I change. So either I'm going to be looking at modules that are set on, you know, a, a seafaring sort of thing, or I'm going to make that up myself. So I, I think before I do any prep, really, uh, I'm going to have the session zero and see, you know, how many people do I have? How many, um, you know, how many of X, Y, and Z, you know? Yeah. Like like a crap phone say you can always tell when somebody's being weird just for the sake of being weird and that, that in, in it sucks and very much so I agree with that as mm -hmm. well like you know it, it's just like trying to uh, you can tell when trying to mm -hmm. like, weird. yeah and I think I think a good example of being weird but um, it, it, the what am I trying to say evoking you know the the elements of it being weird well like the the height of TSR like AD and D where we had, you know, Hollow Earth, uh, Dark Sun, um, oh, what am I trying? Spelljammer. Um, oh, those yeah. are setting. Those are settings that are weird, and you know, haven't hadn't really been done before or since. But they think about them, especially Dark Sun. I think. Um, yeah, Dark I'm not Sun familiar really with Dark Sun. Weird. Like that was always like too weird for me. Mm. And this is something I talk a lot about too. Like when you when you design a world. If you make it too weird, it oftentimes like the world is is gonna become the star, of the show instead of the character. You know what I mean? Like now, like the like the character become like a device to expose the world instead of the world being a place for the am I, instead of the, the world being a place for the character to adventure in. And this is always like a a bit of a a bit of a trap I find. You know that, and it's part of the reason why I like to keep my world a. Uh, fairly like simple like and also like i like when the if you do a world that is very weird you're gonna open up yourself to a lot of like modern may i question because now like the the player cannot like the player don't don't know the world don't understand the world and they so so they have to always ask to uh, always ask those questions about uh Oh, is is that thing exists in this world? Can I do this? Can I, can, you know, all this function? So if you keep a world like something that is a uh, that is a little more like I like the word I use often is mundane, then they can make assumption that are going to be true. So I think that also take a lot of like a it it takes a lot of distraction away from the role play. I <laughs> yeah I agree yeah. I, I totally forgot Planescape. Yes, that's true, Charlotte. <laughs> um, uh yeah that's a good point i think it, 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 i never put that together but it uh that that totally makes sense um you know when you uh when you make things strange yeah does uh does my character know about you know even if the care even if the player knows about the weird setting there's um you know the the strangeness of that uh world can lead them to going oh i don't want a meta game so mm -hmm. do, do i know that this really weird thing that's a secret to most people uh, yeah it, it can lead to that so that's yeah that's again something you have to do at session zero is sort of uh, that is something uh, actually a question i'll ask during session zero is how much do you want your characters to know about the world that way we oh. can just assume oh you don't know anything and yeah weird shit's gonna happen to you um, I yep. think Crap Phone just mentioned that actually. Where'd he go? Yep. If you're prepping for paranoia, just reverse all of them and everything that's said tonight. It'll be great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's uh, yeah. So if that's your intention, that that sort of thing's great. But you you have to be clear with your players on that. 
yeah and also like you mentioned like session zero and also like that's a that's a thing like mm -hmm. uh you can also check with your player and you mentioned like having the session zero before really starting the prep maybe you have like the vaguest idea of what you want to do so you can like propose it to the player but then like work with the player to what kind of world and what kind of setting they're interested in what kind of story and also understand what kind of player they are if you want to make like this uh, big elaborate world with like all this backstory and this fiction that the characters wouldn't know the players need to know if you don't want to always have to feed them the information but if your player are not interested in like uh delve deep into that you know like if, even if we talk about like a known setting if you want to do like star war mm. and you got players that never watch any of the movies maybe it's not a good fit you know maybe then it's gonna just gonna you get you, you're basically wasting your time there if you want to do like a you know, I know you play Pathfinder and you have like this uh, setting of a uh, Glorantia, is that right? Uh, Glorantha is a uh, rune quest. Uh, Galarian oh, I, is Pathfinder. Galarian, always, always miss, I miss, uh, I always, always mix up the boat. So, Galarian, or it'd be true for Glorantha as well, but like there's this big world that is like already pre made. You have to learn it as a GM, but also mm. the players kind of have to learn it. So you have to kind of know the group. Like if they're not into that, hmm. maybe it's not the right way to go, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, Galarian's a really weird setting, and it's maybe my favorite pre-made setting that exists out there. So weird for the sake of weird, and just weird setting is uh, it's two different things. Uh, just to be clear on that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, it's weird. spoilers for a ten-year-old setting. Uh, there's alien spacecraft landed far below the Earth's crust in, you know, your Renaissance fantasy style setting in Galarian. So, uh, yeah, I, I like that. That's weird. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's um, it is definitely something that you have to if you're if your players don't like the setting, then don't just, you know, try to force something that only you as the GM like on them. Um and as a player, don't feel, uh, uh, what is it, compelled to join us a, uh, a session in something that you don't like. Uh-oh, uh-oh, are we already to the quantum ogre? Uh, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. But, no, uh, we, we, we'll talk about it later. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, uh, again, I think, I, I think that's the thing of, like, where you get into knowledge skills in games mm -hmm. and that's sort of how the skill mechanics of the game build up how much the individual characters know about yeah. the world they're in because maybe the barbarian that's from uh i don't know the the plains of taldor fighting gnolls uh is he doesn't know much about the world other outside of taldor he knows about his very tiny maybe he doesn't even know about you know the big cities or the governance in taldor he just knows how to live from one day to the next so. Yeah, I I never never been a big fan of those skills because like I I find like it's always like a it kind of break through the game for me. You know what I mean? You have to stop it. Oh, mm. your character will know that. Yeah, you, you have to. It's basically like exposition dumb. Even if you make them very small and very concise, and you know when you when you're into the narrative, exposition dumb usually like are not a great thing to have. Uh, also, I'll tell you what I like to do when I when I start a new campaign. I'm mm -hmm. gonna have a general idea of the world I wanna have. And usually, yes, I'm gonna do it X, but Y. I'm gonna take a setting that we know that we're familiar with. Or if I wanna do like a fiction setting, then I can take it as well. So it's just X, not even the Y. But usually I'm gonna take a setting like maybe like, oh, it's the War of the Roses, but uh, vampires are real or running the, the show, you know, super, like, oftentimes something like that, you know. And the Y, the all the implication of the why oftentimes the why is going to be unknown to the player to the to the, to the characters so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if the player doesn't know it too much because like un understanding and discovering the why is part of the it's part of the fun of the game mm -hmm. so that so then i'll come with the to the player with that and then i'm gonna include uh some conflict in the world and not something too big not something like world shattering Maybe it's just a war. Maybe it's a famine. Maybe it's a plague. Maybe, you know, there's something happening that causes some tension between people that is going to be a source for drama. And it's going to be something that is not so big 
that it's completely beyond the, the the scope of normal people like it's still people and, and it still impact people and people are still trying to deal with that conflict but it's big enough that it's too big for the beginning character but it's something that they can look forward later on in game mm. and then once i have that i pretty much have enough to start the game i'm gonna on the first uh first session usually i'm gonna be a little more you know that's i'm gonna try maybe i'm gonna be a little more railroad in the sense i'm gonna give a push to the player because like just to get them starter starting like you know when you start like, like the the campaign in media rest so the first session is going to be more prep in that sense because i will i will, the oftentimes the players come they have their new character they kind of like a bit frozen they don't they, they don't have like the they don't have really the impetus to do something so you mm. kind of have to give them a little bit of a push yeah you have, to, that, you have to do stuff to them i, I yeah. agree the the first session or sessions are definitely uh yeah they, have, you, you put, they need more prep because you don't yeah you have to put things in motion but then after that you can follow the lead uh, the lead of the of the player and mm. wherever they want to go whatever they want to do and often if you play your card right then they're going to be self-motivated by stuff that happened in the narrative you know yeah Something, exactly some like that they are unresolved until they they get beat up by some bandits or something session one and then you know the rest of the arc the first arc of your campaign can be them you know tracking those bandits yeah. down and seeking revenge on them yeah i've had stuff like that yeah. happen all the time yeah and something also often say as a GM, you don't need to have all the answer up front. And you can let the player fill in some of the blank as well. You know, if they, if, and that's also depending on the groups. If you have like players that are reasonable, you know, and you should play with people that are somewhat reasonable, <laughs> somebody that are on the same way, kind of wave, wavelength, try to accomplish the same thing. Don't play with people that are like, just not, don't play with fucking trolls, you know, what I mean, that are just trying yeah. to uh, screw up the campaign and derail everything. Oh, God. Yeah. But if you have like a reasonable people, you can let them. I always say like players are not the audience of the game; they're the co-creator. They control the protagonist, but also if they have an idea, if they want to do something, let them. You know, don't cock, cock block them because oh, I didn't plan for this to to exist in you know like I didn't plan to for it to have like a well in the center of the town. You know, who the fuck care? You know, hmm. it doesn't matter for you. If there was one or not, but the player had an idea that involved the whale, let it be you have a whale. Yeah. Or at least, uh, you know, you go, oh, that's a good idea. There's not one in this town, but there's certainly a town somewhere. And then next session, you know, in between now and the next session, you prep, the, you know, whatever that is. Well, and, you know. de depend depending what the player want to do sometimes, like you want to do yeah. something right in that scene right there. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Mm. And, I'm, and I'm if just you, saying, you know, but yeah. And if, if, it was if a you. Little, yeah. Yeah, if you say also, like if the players say like, oh, I go to the well and I uh, drop my person, whatever, whatever you want to do, you know, and you say and you tell them, oh, there's no well in that town. Now you're going to train your player to ask before he's trying to do something. Is there a well in the town? Is there, yeah, like, you, you, know? you train them to ask questions and you make the character look like a dumbass, especially yeah. if the characters mm -hmm. like lived in that town their entire life and they don't know that there's not a well, then it's like, well, <laughs> yeah. you know, what's what's going on here? Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I think, I think like just like having low prep allow you to include more stuff on the fly because if you prepped all the village you know sometimes i see those people and tell me what you think about that and tell me where you go uh, when you where you are on this i see people that they oh the, the character is going to a village so they're going to draw a map of the village and place every shop and so you don't need that you know it's not really useful all you're going to do if you do that the player is going to spend like minutes looking at the map and trying to figure out what they want to do looking at the map instead of just like trying to figure out what they want to do based on what they know you know if you know the setting if the setting is like makes sense they can go to the village and they can assume that they're gonna find normal thing in the village for that setting and you don't have to know in advance you don't have to know in advance every 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 shop every store if it makes sense the player want to interact with it yeah there's one you know it's not it's not a problem yeah. 
I, I like when maps and like setting guides are more uh, a little loose with it and just sort of go, there is a, a shopping district, there's a weekly, you know, market square. They don't tell you what's in the market square. Maybe, maybe, you know, the town's specialty is, you know, fruits and vegetables or whatever, mm -hmm. but they don't tell you. That doesn't mean there's not a, a swordsmith selling goods. Um, so, yeah, yeah, when it's absolutely everything, I mean, that can be nice for if you're running it more on the war game style of things, right? That way you you absolutely know, you know, here's where, you know, all, all my ducks are in a row so that I, you know, I don't have to worry about, uh, uh, I know exactly how I'm going to set up the battle mat or whatever, but I think for, for the role play purposes, yeah, it's because at the end of the day, your players are going to have, you know, two, three, four times the brains as you, they're going to mm -hmm. remember something. They're going to think of something that should be in this town that you didn't have, like the well example. Yeah. If you didn't put a well in your medieval town and they're not really close to a river, the river water's not good. And one of your, and you forgot to put the well there, you know, and one of your players goes, I go to look for the well. You, you kind of have to immediately go, Oh damn. Yeah. There should be a well. <laughs> Um, let's look at some comments. Yep, uh, it was. Yep, <laughs> the, the, that was a funny one. Yeah, definitely. You need you need good players. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like uh, the weird setting I'm worried about is the weird DMs player that bothers me. <laughs> yeah, you need to. Uh, the 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 people are too weird. Like there's good kind of weird as well, but people are too mm -hmm. weird. Sometimes yeah. they need to be kept out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's creative weird, and then um. Yeah. Uh, Rexter yeah. was saying the thing attractive about Dark Sun is that the it's harsh and unforgiving world and adds more rules for survival. Yeah, I can see that. That mm -hmm. is like like if they had just done that, I would have been all on it on that. You know, like oh, it's desert, mm -hmm. all vegetation is dying, stuff like that. When they started adding like the tri queen and stuff like that, like say ah, you know what? I'm gonna step back at that point. <laughs> but that's the it's thing really is so like, cool. The... You know, it's it's uniquely harsh. You know, you're not just running. Uh... Yeah. Because I think you could run the harsh survival as just like a normal, you know, you could run it as like a World War II Africa Corps campaign, um, which could be cool as well. I'm not, I'm not saying don't do that, but uh, you know, I, I think for a D and D setting, uh, it's Athos is yeah, very cool. Um, yeah. Let's see. Charlotte talk about Blinscape uh, really lets mm -hmm. you play around with things like unreliable narrator and randomness in mm -hmm. general. You could mm -hmm. hold some of it back. You could change things. Extra. Yeah, I think like Blinscape can work because it, because the the people living in this world don't really understand it because like there's so much going on stuff like that. Like it's it's a big it's a big confusion. Everybody's confused in that world. Everybody's uh, from from my understanding anyway. So I think then it it's not like a it's not a world that is like it's a world that is not mundane, but it's also not mundane for the people living in it. Like, yeah, the people that grew up in Sigil, maybe they're a bit blasé and stuff like that. But still, like when you go in the plane and stuff like that, the point of the the point of the of the setting is still to explore and to f f f see new world. You know, it's not like a normal reality, and that's like kind of knowledge. What do you mm. think? Yeah. Um... I think with that, you know, going back to the idea of knowledge skills of like how much do the characters know about the world. Um, mm -hmm. it, I think a lot of GMs do this sort of subtle but annoying thing where almost all the NPCs that the characters interact with know everything about the world. They, they just know stuff, you know, they, yeah. and it can lead to this like, uh, this sort of annoying thing where it's like, well, damn, we don't know anything. I guess we gotta we gotta go over to the wizard's tower and get info dumped on, and we gotta you know we've gotta go over to the college and you find some guy smarter than us to info dump on us, and you know, but it's you know what isn't it so much more impactful if you live in one of these really weird worlds like Planescape and you go to you know the the smartest person. Uh, that your group knows and they just tell you, yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what's happening. Then it's like, yeah. oh, well, if you don't know, we should probably figure out. <laughs> we should probably do something about that. Is yeah. you know, I, all of the good pre-made settings to me will say, hey, if you couldn't fill in the gaps and make up your own stuff at your table, it wouldn't be a role-playing game. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be a choose-your-own-adventure book. Um, 
as that's what you know i've i've play tested for uh, pathfinder before and that's jason bullman their lead designer that's that's his philosophy is you know these are these are the guidelines this is what does exist but it's not everything that exists there's mm-hmm. things beyond this world that the people in that world might not understand so yeah 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 like basically like a big thing and a big point like uh with the with planescape and the command chart there and what you're saying there with the knowledge skill a big point is like a, a big problem is when there's a disconnect between character knowledge and player knowledge so that's what we're talking about like if you have a player that are willing to do the homework which mm. Most aren't. Let's not kid ourselves. Most players aren't willing to. You know, that's something we can talk about, like player prep. You know, we talk about we talk a lot about like prepping for the game for the GM, but about prepping for the game for the player. It's often expected that they're gonna do uh, none of it at all, no, none at all. That's but true. Yeah. If you want to, if you if they want to play in this specific setting, well, mm-hmm. you shouldn't. Like your character is gonna know stuff about the setting, so you as a player should know those things. Otherwise. You always have got to be like spoon fed the info. Yeah, I'll I'll tell you how I do it, and then I want to hear your response, um, your ideas on this. Basically, it, if I have someone that's going to be playing a super intelligent character or a very old character that's just explored a lot, mm-hmm. I'll want them to do some work into knowing the setting, knowing the world. Um, I don't need them to buy the books or anything. I'll explain it to them, but you know, I'll say, okay, you know either get with me in DMs or, you know, sit with me for an hour or so, and we'll, we'll talk about it someday. Uh, does that interest you? Cause some people are into that. Some people are just into, you know, learning about the world. And uh, then it's, it's cool when they, you know, drop little seeds of knowledge throughout the session and they can really play into the fact that they're this old wise and wizard or what have you. Uh, but if they don't want to do that, I will probably say, Hey, uh, why don't you just play somebody that doesn't know much about the world you live in? You know, if you play, you know, let's take a class-based system, but, you know, any sort of thing that would be considered a fighter, a, a marshal, somebody who's good at fighting, good at shooting, good at whatever in your setting, they don't necessarily need to have broader knowledge about the world. They could, they could break that trope. Of course, that's a different mm-hmm. topic. But, you know, if it's a class-based system, you know, a class that doesn't get many knowledge skills or any knowledge skills, I would recommend they play that and then they can role play their lack of knowledge of the setting because their character also doesn't know much about the world, right? You know, uh, if I was role playing an average American, we, I wouldn't be able to point out half the countries on the goddamn map. Like, so it's it's fine that they don't know about the setting of the world. <laughs> Let's talk about the state. Can you pinpoint out half the state? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, the way, you know, the way, I like, yeah, yeah. sorry. No, I was just going to say, even I, I don't know every restaurant in the town I've, I've lived in for five years, you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I'll tell you the way I like to deal with this, and but I would caveat that with saying like, it's to use with extreme caution. It's like if you're a character that travel a lot, that is experienced, that would know a lot about the world, because I keep my world very fluid, because I keep, I do very low prep, I can tell the player, like, make it up, you know? Mm-hmm. Look, I I don't know. Like I don't know in advance. I'm gonna make it make something on the fly. If you want to go see uh, who's the lord of this place, but if your character would know that, and you're talking to another character about the lord of that place, it doesn't bother me if you make it up. You know, I try not to be protective of my setting. You know, I, I like I see GM do that. Like they their world building is their creation, and they're very protective of it. And they thought it all out and now they they, they kind of get bothered if somebody else injects something that they didn't mm-hmm. plan you know they have all this big story plan like i try not to do that mm-hmm. and i say it's to use with extreme caution because you have to have like i said again players are reasonable and stuff like that and if you're not up for it maybe don't play a character that knows a lot you know like but that's part of the game you know you want to you, like, you can create I'll, I'll let my player inject stuff in the world and sometime maybe I'll say, eh, actually, like, let's let's slow down a bit on that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, mm. but if you have a good I, player that you mm. used to play with, I think absolutely you can let them. Like, you know, like I like I I, I don't fucking know the name of all the the lord like, of the setting. Like, you want, but you you a noble, you know them. You want to go see somebody? Tell me who he is. You know, like, or not tell me as a, as the 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 player to the, as the GM, but let your character. You're talking to another character. 
tell him with the with this and then and then it, it becomes canon you know because your character would know that uh and maybe sometime i can inject something that you don't know yeah this guy you were talking about now you go see him he's been dead for two years you know what i mean if i want yeah. like, you can show curveball like that it's part of the back and forth like it, it's role playing it's a conversation in a way you each bring something else Hmm? You're gonna trigger Abraham. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't like that. No, he had the he had a whole video a few months ago that was like role playing games is not a conversation. But like, uh, I get what you're saying. It's a uh, in tech writing we would call the it's a two way medium. Yeah, um, where it's a dialogue. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I I was thinking about this, and it's not something I've tested, but I, I I like the idea of it in my head right now. So let me know your thoughts on it. What about knowledge skills as a means for the character to, the character knows something, but it's for the player to make something real. They they get to, so, yep. you know, they roll really high on their knowledge check. Okay, GM, I know that there's this very powerful alchemist in town. And, you know, yeah, maybe I... the, um, like Shadowrun has the, um, oh, what is it? Uh, the the co connections thing. Where you get to set how powerful the connection is and how friendly towards them you are, and you spend a certain amount of points. So maybe the higher you roll, the more useful that knowledge is. Yeah, I, I'll uh, I'll tell you a secret. You know, we talk mm -hmm. a lot about like the player shouldn't roll dice unless the GM told them to, and I think that's generally good advice. If anything else, like just, just follow that. But. Sometimes I like to break this rule myself, but you know, it's all the rules. You have to understand the rules before breaking them. Don't don't just break them uh, willy nilly. But like, so the rules, like the GM don't like the GM is the one tell you when to roll die. But if you have a good group, if you have player the reasonable and stuff like that, sometimes I'll say, I'll let them. Like you can just make your own fucking roll. You know, you wanna you wanna see and interpret it yourself. You know, you kind of like in some point. So a character ask. The player's character a question the the players want to know if his character would know the answer you 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 get this knowledge skill you can roll it and give you answer in a, accordance to it as a gm you know i could tell you like the character asked you as you your character something i could tell you make that role but you know if you have a good group, you can trust them and, and you can let the guy say well you know what make if you're not a player that try to win at all costs and you know that are honest you can just make his own fucking role and and then interpret his own result i roll low yeah i don't know and like i i wish i could help you but unfortunately i don't, I don't have the this this information if you roll high then you make something up you know yeah but again and, and that that philosophy in in my experience has helped stop the mother may i too you don't yeah. need to ask me can i roll perception can i yeah, you can look. Are you blindfolded? Are you, you know, deafened? Are you everything? Yeah, you can roll perception. Yeah. So now my players just have the, oh, I'm looking around at roll perception, you know. Yeah. I, I'm if, trying if, to discern. If you have, if you have player like that know the rules, and especially mm -hmm. if you have player that like GM before, you know, they kind of mm -hmm. know all the flow of the thing. Yeah. If you have player like they, they are, they're there for creating the narrative, they're not there to win. They're not there like to, mm -hmm. you know, they can referee themselves in a way. And yeah. I like that. Yeah, but like I, that's not something I would do with just a group of rando that I picked up uh, off the street. You know, let's be clear about. I'm yes, I, I definitely agree on not picking up randos off the street. I've yeah. done that too many times. <laughs> I don't want to get in the weeds. Uh, but Rex Teal, I love Morrowind. Morrowind is an awesome setting. Um, it's so alien and yet somewhat familiar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that sets it up great because it's just. You're a prisoner. You're not from here. You've been thrown on shore here. There you go. But yes, Morrowind does have a ton of info dumping. All if you don't read what the NPCs are telling you, you're going to be totally lost. So you're yeah. not going to know a damn thing about why you're doing anything you're doing, where anything is. So yeah, that that's kind of the trade-off there, isn't it? Um, yeah, but Rexel is, is is right on that. Like doing mm -hmm. the, the the foreigner in a foreign land where mm -hmm. the the character don't know anything about the land. Like uh, you know, it's it's this John Carter of Mars thing. You know, you know all those like fiction, like Isekai stuff. You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. same thing. Bleaker here says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 
in a, in a Planescape, I'm a Planescape DM, and one thing I see that DM don't do is work lore in game that fits the scenario rather than just being in Fodom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hmm. You want to answer that? Please. Sorry, Marzik. I, I I sorry. I saw this. No, just like I love Americans. Uh, I love America, <laughs> but some of us are dumb. Uh, so yes, yes. Of course, it's a broad generalization. It's important yeah. to mention that. You want to answer that question? If an ogre has oh, twenty strength and a human has twenty strength, they can be both lift boulders. Um, well, depends on the system, right? Um, on the system. you know, in, in Pathfinder, uh, I don't want to become that guy too much, but I mean, that's, that's the system I played for 10 years. So it's something I'm going to bring up a lot in Pathfinder. They tell you what the numbers of each stat mean. I like when systems do that. I like that about crunchy systems. 20 strength means you can lift explicitly this much weight. Mm -hmm. However, there's also the strength role, which is what is that representing? Is it, you know, a guy who can, who has a, a 250 pound bench PR on one day, he might not be able to hit that every single day. Yeah. That's so true. is his strength fluctuating? No, that the D20 or whatever die mechanic you have is what's representing that fluctuation in, in morale. And, you know, is he hydrated? Is, does he have the, you know, yeah. When, when you oh, want to do a PR, yeah. like, and especially with big number, like everything needs to go right. You have to have your your aggressivity right, your spirit right, your technique mm -hmm. right. You have to your energy, sleep, eat. Yeah, yeah maybe the human he's got that human drive to really want to move that boulder, and the ogre is just kind of like you know I'm an ogre, I'm an ogre. I, yeah. I guess I, I don't care. That boulder. Yeah. yeah, and then the ogre rolls a three, and the human rolls an eighteen, and you know, yeah. I like I like, a, when, uh, you know, I like when I like when strength is relative to size you know sometimes like if you have a 20 strength it means you can lift maybe like two, uh, four times your weight you know three times your your body weight so the auger is going to be able to lift more with the same score but i know mm. so, not a lot of them do that uh mm. because then you get in bit into the weed but you know that's a, a yeah. case of like just makes sense also just like the ogre being bigger would be able to lift more just because he bigger boulder because he can mm. At some point, just like a question of size as well, you know. Yeah. yeah, Pathfinder does that. It's got like a table where you you look at the strength on one side and then the size on the other, and then you multiply it if they're quadrupedal. But yeah, so it that does get super crunchy. But yeah, yeah. Um, Charlotte was saying like uh, no weird setting, nuts to that. I'll put as many cyborgs and robots into my game as I want. I said to that you can, but justify them, hmm. like. I have a reason for it. And you don't have to tell the reason, like I have a reason in your back of mind. You don't have to tell the reason. You don't have to uh, explain the reason. Like you don't, don't do the info dump because the character wouldn't know that if it's weird, if it's a, but if at some point you decide to investigate and sometimes you can even like figure out the, the reason afterward, but like try to justify it, make the effort, like just don't make it like, oh, it's just, it's just, it's just like that. You know what I mean? That's unsatisfying. What do you think? Um, Yeah. Um, I think that kind of goes with being weird for the sake of being weird. You know, if you're, it takes the punch out of it if there's no normalcy to contrast it with. Uh, she was making a joke though, because L misspelled weird as wired. <laughs> weird. Oh, I, oh, I yeah. got, I, I missed the joke. I missed the joke. Uh, yeah. I, I can't, I can't read uh, well enough. But yeah, no, I mean, it was, it was a good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so the oh okay yeah, yeah crispy makes a good point here uh, i like to prep npcs by having a big sheet of names and identifying characteristics yeah for you know because sometimes your players will go oh i'm gonna go to the apothecary in town or the you know the yep. blacksmith or whatever and you go oh crap i didn't you know i didn't plan on one of those being there but yeah they're for sure here and you just you know because yeah. i'm that that's... helps me a lot because i'm terrible at names uh I that, cannot... that, that would say like having lists of names that's mm -hmm. the one thing you should have in your prep. Like that's the that's gonna be a most fucking useful thing. You can prep location, you can prep encounter. Maybe you're not gonna use them. Having a list of name is never gonna be fucking wasted. Big mm -hmm. list of name for people, male, female, of different race. If you, that's the kind of setting you have, and mm -hmm. maybe name for location as well. So then, because if you want to do stuff on the fly, coming coming up with a name that doesn't sound stupid. So if not everybody's in the name Bob. Uh, that that's like I would say like in preps, 
people like I often say like I'm very low prep kind of guy. That's one thing. Don't don't skim them. Um, no, no, you're not doing it wrong. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, that, you no, know, I, I, I would say that's a, you know, that's a high trust exercise. Um, yeah. mm. <laughs> but you know, try it out, try it out, see if it works for your table. If it, if it causes problems, don't do it, but you know, no one's going to die. So, so don't be afraid to try different stuff. Yeah. What were you going to say before I brought up? Oh. Oh, I forgot. Crispy say, uh, I agree, Max. Uh, there's a lot of prep that is essential for front loading the key element of the wall and setting expectation. Yeah. Uh, and that's something we can talk Like we, we talk about, like, yeah, for the first, first session of a campaign, a little more prep is needed. Mm -hmm. After that, a lot of the prep actually is done in the preview, is done like during play because you know, listening to your player. If you listen to them, you know the plan. That you kind of know what they want to do. So now you can just like, you, you don't have to. Uh, and especially if you live like a, if you if you don't finish your session on like a nicely wrapped thing, then you always kind of know and you can just like follow the lead of your player. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like right now, all I have to do for my Pathfinder session tomorrow is prep a combat encounter that they set up last session, right? Mm -hmm. Last session, they're, they're setting up traps. They're setting up this ritual that's going to take the mages a, a while to finish. So the rest of them need to defend them while uh, they get attacked. And so I'm like, okay, I, I know what's happening now. Now all I have to do is prep, you know, <laughs> the, the, the combat encounter, right? Do you think there's a, do you think there's a big uh, difference in prep? Because you, you mentioned like prepping combat encounter mm -hmm. in between, like if you have a more crunchy system or a more rule light system, you think like because if you play like a system that is like more more bits to play with, maybe you do need to think about the environment the fight is going to happen. And is there like a river of lava flowing? Mm -hmm. Is there like a cliff? Is there a bunch of traps? Is there like a you know, and the monster that you're gonna encounter, the ability that they have, the feet they can mm -hmm. use, are they gonna interact with the environment with that? Yeah, because I'm, I'm you know, they've they've dug like if we did the combat that session, then I'm gonna have to think like oh crap, what what is the the penalty for them digging a moat? Do I just make that difficult terrain? Is is <laughs> that you know it, is a moat really just as bad as you know them tossing a bunch of marbles out? Because marbles are also difficult terrain, so that doesn't really seem fair. No, I think mm -hmm. I should make it worse than that. But you know, if I have to do that on the fly, that's gonna sort of you know, it's gonna interrupt the flow of gameplay. Um, so you know, when they're setting all of that stuff up, it's you know I'm making my notes down and going, okay, I need to I need to look up if there is a rule for this outside of the game, and if there's not, then I should probably you know reward them for for going through all of this planning and finding out that they even were going to be attacked in the middle of the ritual because they. You know, they smartly thought, I bet we're not going to get this like 12 hour long magic ritual done. You know, surely he's not just going to go, all right, yay, you did it. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. Uh, so I, yeah. I, I, th I think that's one place where like the rule light system kind of shine because like mm -hmm. it's expected that you're going to make more ruling than just like follow the rules. So like, oh, there's oh. a moat. Just all jump, mm. like make a make a jump roll or whatever. Mm. Step, like, you yeah. know, Although I I would counter that by saying a really crunchy system, Shadowrun, uh, mm. fourth or fifth or whatever edition, they're really all pretty crunchy. Um, I would you would go insane if you prepped every single combative NPC in that game because character creation takes so long that's what we're going to get to the next topic but yeah. the character creation in that game takes so long if you prep all you know 12 mooks you know all the all the you know corpse set goons in every fight that's going to take forever but if you just go they've got a kind of crappy pistol they're okay at shooting their pistols they're they're rolling 5d6 they're rolling 5d6 to hit They've got decent body armor, so they've got 60. You don't need to have the big sheet of everything they have with you. You just go, oh, oh one of my players has decided to shoot a random, you know, mall, mall security guard. Uh, okay, mall security guard stats are probably going to be around here. But that does yep. require more system mastery in that case. So I would yep. say that's that's easier to do in, in a light system, but not impossible to do in a crunchy system. 
Yeah, I I like I, that. That's usually my my preferred way to approach. Uh, because like I say, like I usually don't know exactly what's gonna happen, and I like being surprised. Mm. That's the thing too. Yeah. Like I don't I don't like the railroad because I like you know, I I'm playing the game as well, and mm. figuring out like figuring out what's gonna happen with the player at the table. That's part of the game for me. Yeah, Max, you're being very sizest. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's because I'm I'm, I'm a big guy. <laughs> so, Come on, man. So, it's not fair. <laughs> uh, Arnman say I will take a few sessions uh, for our new groups of players to find their groove. I have a lot of material already at the beginning. And that's a fair point mm -hmm. as well. And we, we mentioned about, like, oh, depending on the, the type of group you have. I've been lucky to often time play with the same kind of group of players. It does come with drawback because, like you said in the beginning, you, you cannot do the same thing over and over. If you do mm -hmm. the same thing, the same setting with different group, it's going to be different because the, the character is going to, the, the player is going to act differently. And even with a good with player, the character is going to act differently. You can have sometimes like a long term campaign, like a campaign wall that you run many characters and many adventure, many party in it, and that's fine as well. But uh, when you have like new new players that you don't know, I I think that does require much more prep, like you said, because you have to get the vibe of them. You, you and my advice on that would be prep some stuff, have some stuff ready. But be ready to kill your darling, like we say in writing. You know, like don't be married to it. Yeah, be if the be player, ready for like, your yeah. Be ready for your player players takes to the kill lead. your oh oh yeah. Be yeah. ready for your players to kill your cool villain the first yeah. encounter when you wanted him to flee. You know, not not only that, but also like even like you, you prepare like a bunch of plot hook, a bunch of mm. storyline and stuff mm. like that. But if the player take the lead if the player are role playing if the player like are taking the game somewhere else let them and this mm. prep that you did you can always reuse some other time oh so you uh, do like reusing reusing all prep okay okay if it if, if it hasn't been used yeah mm -hmm. you know you, mm -hmm. you 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 create like this encounter the player didn't go to it well, maybe at some point you're gonna need an encounter of that type on the fly. You can just like put it out. Then, you know, sometimes it's kind of like a building block that you can inject there. Mm. I think some people reuse uh, prep work in. I can't remember. I think it was a Knights of the Dinner Table uh, skit. But no matter where the players go, they always run into this box that the GM wants them to open. So I think. Uh, I think you have to be uh, clever about it, right? You have to be, you know, oh, uh, I left this plot thread that this uh, robber baron is uh, attacking these villages and the players go, well, we don't have time to deal with that right now. We've got to go mm -hmm. kill this dragon. Then later on, you reuse that prep, not in the way of the robber baron suddenly teleports in front of them, but in the, okay, well, now the robber baron's not harassing villages. He's got twice the many used to, and he's, you know, he's harassing cities now. Maybe he's worked his way to uh not even necessarily those players but the next uh, uh campaigns of players i like i like doing that i like using the loose ends of one campaign to start that's already my prep for the next campaign and but that, i think that's, that's uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that that's also like having the world be a living place that exists mm -hmm. for its own sake the world just just, just doesn't exist in a hundred feet radius around the party the mm -hmm. world doesn't exist for the party. The, ro the world, the people in the world exist for their own sake. So the world keep on going. Yeah, if there was like a robber baron do going into Bendritry and you did nothing about it, some, his, his storyline is going to evolve as well on the side. So then when the player come back to it at some point, it, uh, it, it will uh, impact them. Someone mm -hmm. mentioned like KODT. What is KODT again? Knights of the Dinner oh, Table. Oh no! I cannot uh, bring up Actmaster Four. I, I I'm not I'm not familiar with uh, any of it. Charlotte, we will we will definitely be bringing at least I will be bringing up uh, Hackmaster when we talk about character uh, character creation uh, next week. So and we uh, we're mentioning that we're talking about like a reusing plot point, and we talked about that uh, in the note a bit. Like the, like now it's, I guess it would be time to talk about the Quantum Ogre question. Mm -hmm. I think what I was mentioning about like if a plot, if something that you prepare hasn't been used, you can keep it on the side and use it later, adapt it to the situation, make it make sense. I think that's different 
than the quantum auger because a quantum mm-hmm. auger is a way of railroading or like putting bumper you know there's there's a fork in the road you can go left you can go right if you go left there's a fight with an ogre if you go right it's the same fight with the ogre so it's like illusion of choice it's like the mass effect tree <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you gave you the impression of choice but uh and of course in in role playing game you pick one choice you don't know what the other path was but i think that's it's a symptom of almost it's like you're in a weird spot where you're like over prep in the sense that you have this encounter ready that you want the player to go through but in the same time under prep because you don't have the alternative ready mhm so now you give like a fake choice to the player and now at that point you are telling a story and the like that's when the player become the audience because they don't have like a, they don't have a choice they don't impact mm-hmm. what do you think about it yeah um it's made me think about um a uh, high high fantasy in that if you have really powerful players um you probably need to prepare multiple problems otherwise you're going to run into the issue of the the characters just being able to solve every problem maybe that's your flavor of the setting maybe you're running a you know a saturday morning cartoon where the good guys always win at the end of the day and everything's just a setback that's fine but that's not my personal uh, taste in in high fantasy i high fantasy to mean is powerful heroes powerful villains um but it can also mean a lot of villains or just a lot of problems right you know mm-hmm. you think about the the best written superman you know when when superman's well written it's he can solve any of these problems you know they're not just you know infinitely power scaling uh you know oh he's got a kryptonite thingamajig that it, mm-hmm. it, no it's okay you can either go save this person falling off of a building or you can go save this person in a burning building which yep. are you going to do? You can't be in two. I don't care that you can cast, you know, eight million spells. Do they help you be in fifty places at once? And then whatever mm-hmm. problem you didn't solve, well, part of your prep can be not like going into extreme detail, but just a sort of like you know one or two sentence. If this is the problem they choose to solve, then this will probably happen down the line. If that's the problem they choose to solve, then this problem will probably happen down the line. Yeah. So you know, maybe you know one path has the ogre they fight the ogre and it can be something as simple as you know one path doesn't have an ogre it has it has no problems it's it's just a fine path you can go down the path no problem and the other path has the ogre but the ogre's got a bunch of loot yeah <laughs> but this is a having a lot of urgency like a different like like more fire than you can put out basically is a, is a good way to give like choice to the player and they have to think about mm-hmm. the consequence which one then prioritize mm-hmm. but if you want to go that route the important part is like how do you inform the character of all those different emergency all those different issue mm-hmm. because sometimes mm-hmm. they can be they could be potential issue that will cause problem down the road that the character are not just aware of because they didn't mm-hmm. do the research they didn't they didn't go to the right place they didn't talk to the right people mm-hmm. so I would, I would put the caveat that if you want to go that route I, I think that's a good way to do it when you're in mid-level campaign mm. when the player got resource or connected or maybe like in the network of like with noble and stuff like that so yeah mm-hmm. yeah Armin I mean, I think... Charlotte... mm. yeah sorry go ahead i uh, yeah i i think it's important to, you know you have in the case of the burning building describing you know players see smoke on the horizon in the opposite direction or not in the same direction as whatever they're yeah. they're going to do um or maybe it is maybe it's an additive problem maybe it's a problem that they're going to also have to deal with um and you know occasionally having npcs inform them of you know the robber baron that's coming up and then and then you can tie that into is that npc reputable is this just some dude that they've never met before trying to lure them into a trap you know and that can so i i like informing through npcs a lot because it keeps the keeps the characters and the players on their toes both um but yeah, Armand says, um, I agree with Charlotte with using modules to start. If the group works out, then you put in a lot of effort. Mm. I kind of agree, but I think you can do it the opposite way too. I think you can, 
if you're running a more sandboxy campaign where there are multiple problems, I like starting with the modules are happening. If you're using a game with a preset world, you know, Faerun or Planescape or Galarian, what have you, there the modules are all telling you there's problems in the world, right? That's the start of so what I like to do is have, you know, there's a problem over here, there's a problem over here, there's a problem over here. What that means is whatever the players decide, which of those players, which of the problems the players decide to solve, that's the module they're going into rather than going already. You're in this module, deal with it, figure out why you're here. Uh, that would be them. like the, the, the theme park approach where you have a like, different mm -hmm. ride that you can, you can and, choose to go on. And then when, if, um, you know, when they get into the module, you know, then I'll go totally off the rails of the module, yeah. like kind yeah. of like you said, you know, like because. A lot of modules they have, you know, they'll have, oh, you have to get this MacGuffin or it's just going to be a total party kill by the end of it, you know, or, um, yeah. you know, and then the other two, the two modules they didn't go into, now they're, uh, they're changing. They're, they're totally different because yeah. some other I, I, adventuring I was, party is going in them, you know. It's, it's exactly what I was about to say. If you want to go this route and you have like a bunch of modules and the player can kind of change, choose, like the other, in the other model, something happens as well. Like the other module, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. other the other problem something happened as well either somebody else took care of it or the problem grew or something like that mm -hmm. so i think like mm -hmm. that's a that's a fair point and i was about to say that but you got me there and i say also if you if you want to start with a module always say like like you said be ready to go off the rail like immediately if like i always say like follow the lead of your player like don't try to restrain them and stay on the part of the module if they have idea if they're contributing something to the narrative listen to them and follow them that'd be like my advice on that but yeah if you have like players that are like but and then again if you have like players that are like a little bit uh need a little more end holding using a model could be a way to do it but then also you're kind of training them to have the end old held in a way so it's kind of like a double-edged sword in my opinion yeah yeah um hmm I'm trying to think of uh, specific examples. Um, but yeah, I mean, m modules can be, they can be really useful uh, building blocks. I, I treat modules kind of like Lego sets where, you know, the Lego set tells yeah. you, you can build a car and, but you know, you don't have to build a car exactly how it says it's built. You know, you got, you got four wheels and an engine. What's, be, what's between there, here and there is. Especially if you bring, if yeah. you bring block from outside of the set. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I think in in role playing game, that's what you sh that's something you should do. You know, you bring yeah, especially if you're if you're running a module with characters that have already done stuff, right? You know, um, mm. I I think it can be fun occasionally to ignore the the recommended level on a module. You know, this is made for uh, player characters of level one through three to uh, and four of them, and mm. to just like well, sometimes the characters need to be reminded of where how powerful they are. Right. Yeah. So, you know. I wanted to have uh, your opinion on that uh, comment there. Like uh, the Rex still said, one thing I kind of struggle to grasp is how much prep is too much and how much is too little. Obviously, this is a very subjective. I personally want to learn more in the low prep section. What are your thoughts on that? When when does it become too much, and is there like a point where it's not enough? I I think it's only too much when you're wanting to pull people you're wanting to pull your players in a direction and you you get this feeling of like ah, dang it i wrote so much here and they're just they're just blasting past it they're ignoring it ah dang it why did i even do that and you can't think of a way yeah. to reuse it as max said earlier then that's too much right but if you're going into it with the philosophy of the prep is for me and if yeah. the players never if the players never interact with it whatever right Maybe I'll play with a different group and then I can reuse it not in this campaign, but in a different campaign. I think yeah. too little prep, I, I like lower prep, but I think too little can have the more major issues where you have things like stalling in the middle of a game, yeah. right? You need to, you know, you go, oh crap, um, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't know about that. Oh, I've, you know, the, this, this character wants to go find a, you know, a monk to train with. Oh, I didn't put, you know, I didn't think of any monasteries nearby and it 
uh, it wouldn't really make sense for one to be. And I don't know where they are in the world. Um, uh, crap. Let me let me look. Let me open the book. Too low prep can lead to those like uh, I need to look but something up moments. <laughs> if you if you if you say like me open the book, it means you have like a you 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 probably implying that there's some kind of like a pre-made campaign there, which already like bring you into the lot of prep it's just like prep done by somebody else because if you go really low prep and they say oh i don't know where there's a monastery well you don't need to think about it where it's like you know well there's a monastery like uh in in that first place that makes sense you know what i mean well yeah i mean on that side then it can lead to things being either either too formulaic or too random yeah so, but I, like so, that that's, that's what yeah. I, I say like the first thing you make sense for me like too much prep. There's two things I would say is too much prep. And one you touch already on. It's once you become like, oh, that you invested so much effort that now you want to you're gonna force your uh, your player into that. At some point, if if that's the your approach, that's too much prep. If it, if you did so much prep that you have like the kind of sunk cost almost, or you're not willing to sacrifice mm. it, then that was too much prep. The other thing that I say is too much prep is when you're no longer having fun doing it. If you have fun doing the world building and stuff like that, I've had it. But if it become a chore and you feel that you need to do all this prep and stuff like that, then you're doing too much. Learn mm. to do less. Mm. Not enough. It's if you get yeah caught with your pants down. You maybe you didn't prep quite enough. And I'm like you know I say like I'm a very low prep GM, but I've been GMing for nearly thirty years. So. I got a lot of experience like so and i when i started i would prep more and at some point like you see you, you see pattern and as you go and if you see like situation similar in the past that you can like draw from you get all this background you can draw from so it is a skill that mm -hmm. can be developed but it's not a skill that you're going to develop if you always go to your session over over prepped so it's something like if you need if you feel like you need the preparation to feel safe and to feel confident just try to do a little less at each time and see how it goes and at some point your player are going to tell you like man that was a fucking great session mm -hmm. and it's going to session that you know like the prep the least but they they felt like they were so engaged and everything was flowing and stuff like that now you you know like you you've reached a point and then you can like keep keep cutting and now you're like mm. you're gonna be comfortable just coming in the in the table, like spending an hour thinking about the game like while you drive to the table basically. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. A lot of your prep can just be thinking about okay, what did they do last? Okay, what what logically is the next thing? What are some things you think? I, I think also this may be taboo. Don't be afraid to ask your players after the session. Yeah. What when you when you've dropped character when you're no longer role playing? Don't be afraid to ask your players if you're just totally lost in like a sandbox campaign. What what do you guys plan on doing next? What are your like? What are your characters' goals now? Maybe a character completed their main goal, but they're not planning on retiring, and you're like, okay, what are you doing now? And mm -hmm. if they don't give you like a very concise answer, now it's time for you to act on them. Um, but also that I think that's a good idea to as a GM to take the habit when you see one of the characters trying to accomplish a goal, like put something in his way that's gonna motivate him to go after that. You know what I mean? Or, or mm -hmm, put a delay, mm -hmm. like you know, oh, I wanted to uh, get a castle, but now like this other thing, or now like this jerk is fucking uh, with me. Now I'm gonna mm -hmm. defeat this guy. I'm gonna go fuck with mm -hmm. him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Always try mm -hmm. to uh, before they can accomplish their goal, like seed something else. Yeah. Uh, Something, yeah, that that really helps with um not feeling like you're over prepping when you're yeah. not prepping just for one session, but when you feel like you've ended a session and you're like, oh sweet, I prep, I've got prep for the next two or three sessions. I don't mm -hmm. now I don't need to do anything this week. Exactly. That that's something that helps me feel like I'm not over prepping for something. Yeah. But you know, of course, if it's if it's eating into something we don't talk about a lot, if you if it's eating into like your personal life, <laughs> yeah, and you, I don't have you, one. <laughs> <laughs> Our man ask, uh, what if your setting is a large is only a large city? I would put a lot more detail in such a place. That's something I, I love. Dense setting, I love mm -hmm. like urban campaign when everything is gonna happen in one city. But that's the thing, you know, it's a, like, it, let's say like, because I do mostly like medieval, kind of like medieval low fantasy. That's my mm -hmm. jam. You know, that's what I like. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so I'm going to like, 
I know how like a medieval city would work in general. So I know how this would work. I don't need to know in advance where every building is, where everything is. You know, you kind of fill in the map and fill in the detail to play. You know, at mm. some point the player want to do something, want to go to some neighborhood, want to want to go to the slum. Then okay, there's a slum. It's on this side of the town. If you have like you, you now you you take note during the game, so you build with the player the city, and at at some point you don't have to tell the player what the city is because they they learn and they they got to know it true place so now they're familiar with it they all like was there a slum yeah probably would be a slum yeah kind of slum like a, a poor people mm. neighborhood and stuff like that mm. you don't know exactly where it is you probably have an idea because of where it makes sense but like once they want to go there then you start like populating this area you know that's the advantage that we have over video game in video game you always have like those uh Roll the dice to see how many blacksmiths are in town. Yeah, exactly. You don't need to do that. Blacksmiths. <laughs> yeah. you, you can you can do that, but you don't need to do that either. You can just say like, because like, unless the player asks how many blacksmiths is there in town, then you can roll a you can roll a dice. But other than that, you know they want to see a blacksmith. Yeah, there's one. You ask a NPC around like where's the nearest mm. blacksmith is. He's gonna tell you, oh yeah, there's one on the on this street over there. And yeah. you just turn yeah. there and give some direction. And I think part of that is what what kind of large city is it? Um, is it a medieval large city? Is it a modern yeah. large city? Um, oh hey Halcyon. Um, then do some research into that, right? You know, if it's a modern large city like you know Seattle or New York City that's going to have pretty much literally everything you could possibly grasp. And maybe your randomization just needs to be how far away is it from you? Where yeah. is it? And then mark it down there. Make, make, make it, When you're using random lists, you need to yeah. make sure you're marking down where it was. That way it's not random every single... The blacksmith isn't just teleporting all over the place. Uh, that's something I see sometimes where they, they, they GMs forget to, yeah. to mark and, and right. But yeah. There's nothing wrong with with the rolling to know like the number, like or how many bombs on the street. You know, like it's Francesco, like probably like you roll a 20, 20, 20, 20 sided uh, dice. D one thousand. Yeah. <laughs> no, because that'd be too low if you roll a one. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but for for rolling rolling for stuff like that. But like if like if they they say oh is there like a you're in a modern city and they say is there like a cell phone store nearby. Mm. Yeah. There's like there's probably one you can roll to see like it, it, how far it is, maybe, or maybe it, you know is it an AT and T is it a T Mobile? You know, yeah, is this a blacksmith? Like... Is this a swordsmith? Is this an armor yeah. smith? You know, yeah. So you can roll you can roll for that, but you know if if the and again, hopefully the the character is asking another character like an NPC yes. or whatever. It's yes, not, yes, it's yes, not yes, the yes. player asking the GM. Or... Or they're like, I I look around to see. You know, yeah, the, or, or you say like, I yeah, I look around. Or or maybe they can just say like, I go to the nearest uh, cell phone store yeah. because yeah. if they're if they're, if their character is familiar with the city, yeah, there's a chance mm -hmm. that they might know where it is. Yeah, uh, or they just plug it into Google Maps or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, like in a modern yeah. time. So yeah. so don't roll to know if there's a cell phone store near. Like there's gonna be one. You know, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. there are those things are everywhere. Yeah. Like, so, store, stuff like that. so I think the conclusion we've come to there is just know a few basics about your city. So, you yeah. know, like roughly how big is it? What do they mostly do there? What's, you know, maybe what's the, what's the poverty level like? Um, is it yep. is it big in the sort of Oklahoma City big where it's really wide and spread out, or is it like Seattle big where it's huge population all crammed into a tiny area? Mm -hmm. So know like a few things, and yep. then the big details you can either let your players fill in, or you can fill in through deep. But I mean, you can also you know if it's important to the plot that the T-Mobile is like a secret you know underground gambling ring that your players have been asked to break up then yeah prep that but if if you don't if it is just a t-mobile and there's nothing secret to it you don't need to prep that right yeah i agree with uh oh sorry <laughs> yes the quantum yeah. blacksmith of course that's brilliant would you like to buy this quantum chain mail what does quantum tell me do yeah oh oops it's gone yeah that's all right um too many words, I think, are really just stem from a contrarian motivation because for too long, contrarianism has been associated with profoundness. Yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I want to play against trope. You know, and those tropes are there for a reason. And they're 
like it doesn't make you clever to go against trope it just like make it more cumbersome because now you have to explain like oh yeah actually like no you make this assumption like i always i come back to that like if you have your player make assumption and those assumptions be true it takes a lot of like it take it take it makes a lot of the work for you and you know what we care about story we care about the character that's why as human that's what we relate to we relate to our characters we we don't we're not like nobody's impressed by the world being so like well some are but like those are like nerds are but like usually like but human beings <laughs> nerds <laughs> like like to dive into like detail of a of like a, a wall like a, oh it's so cool in this world like Dorendal or like uh, inverted whatever that means you know, it's like uh, are we implying that nerds are a different species of, of creatures yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but usually people like care about characters and like all the characters interact with, with each other you know so using the tropes allow them to make assumptions that's going to be true and that's gonna that's it, it's it's a lot it's it's their shortcut that we can get to the interesting part which is mm -hmm. the narrative mm. oh, it's a story yeah because like, like you know mind. yeah you'll 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 have the moments where like you know uh, a player didn't spend all their starting money in a game that gives you starting money and that because they don't know what exactly they're going to have to do, they need to do something, and then they go, oh, I need to go, I need a sword, I'm going to go buy a sword. And it's like, okay, yeah, you, you don't need to know exactly all that, right? Um, uh, well, I, I literally just started something. There we go. Yeah, I'm glad I did that, because I totally forgot about it. Uh, Crap Phone says, for prep, I like to have generic things that I can use when things take an unexpected turn. An evil high priest and some minions, a wizard with amnesia, encounters that can be placed anywhere. Yeah. Um, I think we mentioned this that this this could be a, a conversation all its own. How to make uh random encounter tables that are worthwhile that makes sense in your world because so mm. often the random encounter tables are they're all combat, which is dumb because you know most even an army mo even most an army most of them like mo mo most random encounter yeah. tables are all combat. Like those are like a mm. random encounter table made by very inexperienced GM that only think of, about combat. But yeah, yeah, but, but you know, a weird. I, thing. I would say the ones that are like pre-made that you know mm. a random encounter table that you would get you know off like drive through RPG. It, it's a bunch of encounter or you know the ones that come with Dungeons and yeah. Dragons. You know, it's just a bunch of random monsters that you could fight. And mm. I guess something I like about that is on the higher and lower ends, you fight weaker and stronger creatures to show, you know, that these just because you aren't level 19 doesn't mean you can't run into a level 19 equivalent monster. They're out there in the world. I like that about them, but, you know, that's not the only thing you can encounter. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, I definitely think, yeah, the having... Um, uh, having a, a a curated encounter table as part of your prep uh when you know the players are you know wandering off into the forest for no re apparent reason and you're like what or or they just attach to a small detail you mentioned because inevitably your players will you'll describe something and your players will see a detail that they think is important that you totally did not mean to be important and so they're wandering off in some direction and you're like oh uh, <laughs> am I really just gonna spend fifteen minutes letting them wander around and you know, oh, you fight some goblins, uh, then you know that's it. No, no. Yeah, I, I think I think also like what Crapphone said, like having those like, especially like if you're uh, if you're not comfortable with just like doing on the fly thing, purely on the fly thing, having a few encounter and by encounter mm -hmm. I just don't mean combat. I mean like stuff that can happen that can be plugged kind of anywhere. When the if the game stall, then you know you can pick one of those things, the one that makes most mm -hmm. sense at the in, in the time. Uh, that could be a good thing to have, yeah. I mm -hmm. think uh and at some point you know you at some point you won't need that anymore because you've played so much, you've run so much uh, so much game that you know you remember those those other things. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, you, it it doesn't need to be um, insanely complex for it to be. Um, you you don't have to keep adding on new threats, new combo. You can go back to threats that are you know only partially solved or weren't solved. Yeah. What about say sorry? Like I cut a bit. Like 
it's like a you know I'm a, I'm I like jazz quite a bit. I'm a big I'm a big oh, jazz good. guy. And uh, when jazz musicians they do a lot of improvisation, but a lot of improvisation is like pattern that they plug and they reuse and like mm. from like it's not like just pure random and GMA is lot about... what the yeah. lake. Yeah, G G GMing is a lot like that, and, and, and like, and uh, we talked about earlier, like, uh, oh, G like running a game or like role playing game is, is a dialogue or is a conversation. Like, it's the same thing with jazz as well. Like, you listen to what the others say, and then you respond to it. You know, there's a conversation going there. I don't mm. know if that the analogy is going to be useful to anybody. But... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, we're we're about approaching the R and F. Is there any other thing you wanted to uh, touch on before we wrap up? We we can uh, go over time. It doesn't really bother me, but yeah, I think we can look at uh, just look at comments going off of here because I think yeah. as far as our notes go, um, we we've, we've covered you know pretty much all of it. Um, yeah, like uh, L L was asking Mr. Max, oh, but how many empty NPC do you prep to chat up to, to get the to to get the local lore? That's the thing. Like, I don't the empty NPC. I don't necessarily need to prep them, because mm -hmm. like, not everybody is unique. Like, you know, just look around in the world. Like, most people are fucking NPCs. You know, <laughs> most people are like pretty basic. You know, <laughs> most people are average on most things. Sometimes, if you if you look a little deeper, you're gonna find something that they're exceptional at. But at first approach. They're average, like you know. Think about the the people. Like, uh, how much do you know about the guy in the the working in the grocery store that you go every freaking week? You know what I mean? Likely not very much. It, it, because yeah, and you have unremarkable. to you you have to hope uh, or or just know that your players aren't going to be assholes and go and, and make small talk with the guy. Oh, oh what are your hobbies? Yeah. And it's like, god damn it. <laughs> yeah, and and if 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 they do that, yeah. You know, I can I can pick something uh, yeah. something mm. random like oh he likes fishing and I'm gonna mm. he's gonna talk a lot about fishing and yeah. in the most boring way possible. So I mean, hell, ask a, ask a random person now what their hobbies are. You know, that's they're most people today just have they have boring ass hobbies. They don't have ho I would say they don't have hobbies. You know, so yeah, it's very true. That, a tangent. We're we're getting crazy. But even even here, even but, or, yeah. even even or hobbies. You know, like. Mm. I'm quite into role playing. I got a fucking channel about yeah. it. But if I talk about it to uh, like my gym people, like they don't fucking care. <laughs> <laughs> they don't yeah. get it. Yeah. yeah. And if I if I talk to gym stuff to some other crowd, like they say, like, well, man, I, I get it. You you move weight. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just like, yeah, people don't care. Mm. Uh, like I often say, like nothing is interesting or uh, uninteresting in itself. It's like if you pay interest to it. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, the interest doesn't come from the thing. It comes from the person. Mm getting interested into it but uh pc yeah just those those uh random people this is a good point too you know your your players like standing around and just you know having a tea party in the tavern well eventually yep. someone throws a molotov through the tavern window and now you gotta do something yep. about it yeah exactly like that's uh and don't wait until it, like you have to get the feel don't wait until it gets boring Mm. Like, don't wait until like mm. the the campaign stall, but just get the feel when the when the the pace diminish. You know, when the when the character like start like uh, fucking around, going spending too much time in the tavern and stuff like that. That's the time to do something. You know, uh, don't don't wait. Uh, don't wait until it's too late, mm. because then it's maybe you don't have time. you know you don't have any jobs. Pre they go you know they're looking for work. They don't find any jobs posted in the notice board, yep. but. As soon as they're going to look at the notice board, you know, somebody just flies out of the tavern, breaks the glass, and you know, or like, like if, if, if they hang out in the tavern, if they do shopping session, stuff like that, it's time to throw something in, you know. <laughs> this don't, don't, this don't let them get, get away with that, disturb that, yeah. You know, uh, it, the thing of you know, maybe with the shopping session, you know, maybe that helps your prep for the next time. Oh, they, they don't have the thing you're looking for, yeah, maybe, or and then you can, you know. You know. Or may, or maybe like uh, maybe the shopkeeper is upset at the party for some reason, mm. and then yeah. like and then like the you know even at the GM you don't need to know why, but they go see the blacksmith they've seen a few times, they they just coming from adventure and they go see the blacksmith and the blacksmith say ah no, I'm I'm not gonna deal with you anymore, mm. and they just kick them out they don't know mm. and at the GM you don't have to know but then you can think mm. about the party did between session or later on and say 
And oh yeah, you know like this bandit that you kill was a fucking blacksmith brother. Mm. And now he's upset at you, you know. Or something like that. Or maybe the blacksmith needs something and say, you know what, you came uh, you came here often. But uh mm. I need something, you know, just like shopping session need to be disturbed. Tavern yeah, time you, uh, you disturbed. Yeah. And especially if you're playing like one of those high fantasy settings, or even if you're not, maybe you just want a really nice sword, but in the high fantasy setting, you know, you want like a an adamantine yeah. magic sword and the blacksmith, you know, swordsmith, if we're being technical, tells you, fuck off, I don't have any adamantine, you're going to need to go get it for me if you want something like that. I could make one for you if you got me the materials, but... It... Yeah, this, uh, this comment here from Crapone, like, make your player role play that search for knowledge. Don't let them play Modern AI with the GM. That's something that people often don't get. When Shonner say, like, the player don't ask questions to GM, people say, well, how do they know what's thing about the world? People get upset, but actually, that's the thing. The player don't ask questions to the GM. Characters ask questions to other characters. Mm -hmm. So the player don't ask, the, the player don't ask, is there a blacksmith in town to the GM? But have your character say, you, you say like, well, I uh, I ask, you just arrive in a town. Mm -hmm. You have your character grab an NPC at the nearby and say, is that is that a blacksmith around? You know, so mm -hmm. you basically you ask the question, so you're gonna have the answer, mm -hmm. but you don't do it as a player to the GM. You do it as a character to another character. Yeah, and, and it can also be people going, you know, oh, I'm you know, I'm going to go find the library. I'm you know, I find yeah. a yeah. If the you want, if you want to know something bookstore. more in depth, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I, I, good point. That, that's a very good point. A good, a good way to. Uh, you need to train your player on that. Yeah, I'm a bit behind on chat. Oh, not as bored yeah. in the medieval setting, no. For Max's case, yes, but for me, uh, I I don't generally run medieval settings. Um, yeah, it, 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 my background it, it's misleading. It's 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 early Renaissance, not medieval. Um, yeah. And also, well, often, often time, like I say, medieval. Often time, I do like late medieval and stuff like that, mm -hmm. where, like, where you would have like a notice posted on the church, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, and, yeah. and who wants it? Who it's? Yeah, ninety percent of your population is illiterate, but you don't want to play ninety percent of the you know the unwashed masses. Well, you? also, also, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is vastly uh, overstated. You know, it's not as true yes, in medieval yes. time that people were illiterate. You know, we know we know that. But it's, also, it's a kind of literacy. Also, like you, you wouldn't have like like depending on the on the setting as well. Like, you know, you wouldn't have like a job board necessarily for, oh, this monster there, this monster there, because like I like my monster to be more weird and more strange. You no, know? so it's just like a there's not a system to look for adventure to go solve problem because problem are pretty rare, adventure are pretty rare. You know, what I mean, if you, if you start like making like, and that's one point with two when you say like, oh, job board, if you start making a job board for adventurer. It does say something about your world quite a bit. When I say like think about the implication when you add something to your to your world, that's the kind of thing I say. Like if there's a job board for that, it means like being an adventurer is pretty common. Having monster roaming around is pretty common. Uh it just become like it, all those things don't become fantastical anymore, nor the mundane for the for the world. So you have to take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, maybe you do include a bunch of mundane stuff and it's like yep. the weird jobs oh. stand out. And then maybe your players take the mundane job of, you know, they, but but like, the weird stuff the weird stuff wouldn't be posted on the on on the, the, the built on board. Like, you know, if I if I'm looking for somebody to do an exorcism for a demon in my house, pretty fun, well, pretty like exceptional stuff. I, I won't post it on Facebook Marketplace, you know. <laughs> but like, you know, maybe on. like a like a stalker sort of thing they are looking for the people who want to throw their lives away so you know they maybe they're putting it on the notice board because they just can't find anyone that wants yep. to do that job so they're at their wits end and they're just like well hopefully someone takes me up on it that, that, but that's was, a fair point but mm. but that, that that's what i'm saying like if you want to include those things i'm not saying like i want to say like well i'm not saying no don't do it but mm -hmm. i say consider the implication you know what i mean you can do whatever you want but don't do it like willy-nilly like consider like try to put some thought into it consider yeah yeah i i think i think what we've come to the conclusion of is most of your prep should just be thinking <laughs> yeah exactly if, that's if what i just do. don't just you know write write random crap because yeah. you know it would be cool uh, you know write write it down because you know write random crap because it would be cool and then think what are the implications of this random crap that's cool <laughs> think of what uh 
start with one thing and then that one thing can spiral out into a million things. Yeah. So like Charlotte says, don't, you know, if they're going to the tavern to, you know, people like to complain about their problems with the drink, then you overhear about goblins or what have you. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, if you do have that, you know, that stalling, then, you know, you can, you can start from, start from, you know, oh, yep. They just go and kill some goblins. Well, okay. Why were the goblins being a problem? Who are they being a yep. problem to? Is that this person? Is that their patron's only problem? Does they do they have more problems? At least more things. Also, also like I I would say like that's something you can do if you want to go this route. Like uh, oh, in the tavern you're gonna hear about the goblin. Put seeds before like when they, if they outside you know oh you see like this field that I've been burned or there's like mm. uh, this barn I've been you know like don't just just I, don't, just don't make it like random like oh now you're in the tavern you hear about the goblin you know it would leave like mark you know like you would see like oh people are depressed people like are or people are very tense you know it's something you can yeah. you can you can like kind of like uh or or even like very obvious like you know you see a guy you know walking into town like at sundown he's got an arrow in his shoulder you know yeah. like you know or or they they managed to kill one and now they put him on display in the center of town you know in a gruesome way uh you could do like just the like if you want to do just the tavern thing, make it something from far off, you know, making because if you're if the problem is nearby, uh, then it, it should it should have impact on the world. And again, thinking about the the, the thinking about the implication. Oh, I sorry, I, I didn't have, I didn't read that. Uh, you just oh, uh, sorry, don't... yeah, it's just just what I, basically what I was saying. So. Yeah, guard the caravan. That could be on a job board, uh, because that's still like a mundane task. You know, it's mm. Mm. yeah. Is but I mean, anything? that sort of thing was. I'm you know. I'm pretty behind on the chat. Hmm. <laughs> the, yeah, I mean that sort of thing was fairly common, though. You know, you have people, especially if it was like boat duty. You know, you might have stuff listed all over the place. You know, this is later Renaissance, Golden Age of Sail stuff. But you know, you'd have stuff listed that's like you know. Hey, do you want to be a sailor? Well, okay, you're gonna be a sailor, and you're pretty much relegated to living wherever they're sailing to now. That's yep. you know, because they yep. sailing was a sailing was a rough job. People didn't want to do it. They had to a lot of you know a lot of uh, captains basically had to just kidnap people off the street and force, put them into press gangs. So guardian of the them. runes say don't go into specific of things that are in the next session i think that's usually mm -hmm. like a very good advice mm -hmm. very very good advice mm -hmm. uh and like mm -hmm. i even go what like i go even one step further i say don't go into specific you know you just like fill, fill, let the, let, fill in the blank at the table with the player uh use use their idea and they're like you know if you listen to your player because like as a gm you shouldn't be doing you should be doing like most of the talking you know like the player should talk a lot and more than 50 percent should be the, the, the player mm. the, the other player talking but listen to them you know learn to have your mouth shut your ear open like don't do like those big oh i prepare like this uh box text here i'm gonna read to you and then you read you read them a novel you know like you don't do that you just, you just tell them like what's happening and you don't have to give like every detail like i've seen a lot of like this uh oh prepare like three senses like a smell a taste a sound uh you know like i said don't do that <laughs> you know like because the player know what to expect and let them fill in the let them fill in the blank it's going to be much more engaging for them like yeah you can paint them a pretty picture but if you let them like paint the picture for themselves they're going to be much more uh much more involved into it in a way mm -hmm. Because you may, you know, you may, you may kill their excitement when you, when you over explain something and then they're like, oh, that's not exactly how I thought it was. And how yeah, they were I, thinking it was, was way better than how you described it. And it's, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even, a, true I'm not even a fan of using picture, to be honest. Mm, yeah. So I'm, I, yeah. I, because like just uh, whatever you imagine, if there's a detail that you picture in your mm -hmm. mind and you want to interact with it, just, just act like it is there. And then it's gonna be there. We, you know, like we're gonna include it for everybody else to see. Yeah. Uh, and also, like, if you do have the reading and have the expo dump, and you have like you, you have those box texts that you read. Again, you're training your player to be passive. You mm. play. You're training your player to be the audience, not being co-creator. Yeah. And that's big. I, I think 
I, I think you need to know when your players are looking for the info dump because sometimes, sometimes the characters are like they're bewildered by the setting. They're constantly being attacked by people. They don't know why. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you are playing the like Morrowind or Planescape, you know, where they don't know a lot about the setting, sometimes the players are. You can tell they're they're looking for an info dump. You know, yeah. they're looking but, for. They, but, they, they should have they should have their character and then go look for those answers. Yes. Yes. Exactly. That's, yeah. That. Yeah. It if, be, if, you know, yeah. if if the player asks you the GM like what the fuck is happening? Yeah, yeah. Tell them. That's the problem. Yeah. Tell tell them like mm. have your character try to figure it out. Have your character like try to you know that's 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 the game. That's where the game is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the the uh, in card gaming we say reading the card explains the card. You know, in role playing, it's playing the game explains the game. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And certain name here. So use the bulk of your creativity for scenery and personality, the world, uh, and a small amount of for adventure option in the event that your group will like to do some undertaking and encouragement. Yeah, I agree with that in general. I say if you break in conflict into the world, the adventure is gonna come to the character. You know, there's gonna stuff they're gonna do. If and if the player like encourage your player to have their characters have personal goal that they want to accomplish as well like they have to have a motivation like people in life do stuff for a reason you know mm -hmm. if you have them and make their character as person a person wants stuff mm -hmm. so and they became adventurer for a reason play with that mm -hmm. remind them of that you know you're trying to accomplish something you want to become the best swordman around you want to become rich you want to become you mm -hmm. want to avenge your uh, mother whatever mm -hmm. you know and you got and motivation the, yeah. Occasionally, you'll realize, you know, I've, I've played characters where I realized I don't have a good enough, you know, goal or motivation for the character, and so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna axe this character, and we're gonna we're gonna play a new one because this character's just, and, it's they're boring. And, and this this character also may come back later. Mm -hmm. You know, there's yeah. always there's always a chance, like you know, oh, this character, okay, he's out of this storyline. Maybe we're gonna see him later on. You know, Crapphone brings up a an interesting micro point on a large. They can apply to a larger scale once you have movable type handbills. Yep. Uh, job boards make sense uh yeah yeah you, your prep should part of your prep should be you know determining tech level especially if you're you know building the world from scratch you know you don't need mm -hmm. to know everything about you know but you can have you know a vague you know idea are we late renaissance are we early renaissance are we modern are we future how far future so yeah, yeah. um uh got a couple more comments here yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh... oh, <laughs> he's just what? Uh, let's see. Um, mm, yeah. Uh, insert name here it says never underestimate how many people just want to sit down and have the game pull them around. For every one deep gamer, there are dozens of casuals that want. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, I, I, I missed the. Like, I was, I was cut and. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there are dozens of casuals that want a wow experience. Yeah, and I think that's why you need to, you know, everything starts yeah. with vetting your players. Uh, it's kind of a but, top out answer. But also, point, also but... like, like I, 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 okay, yeah, you can vet your player, mm. but don't be too harsh with them as well because a lot of them like mm. just like didn't learn. I, I talked about that uh, on I think on 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 Tuesday on my show, uh, like uh, on my lunchtime show. A lot of players come like now played video game first, so they have like those assumptions that like oh now it's like a video game. Well, it's not actually because in a video game everything is going to be prescripted. You have like specific path you can choose and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So vet your player, but also be a bit generous, I'd say, and because some of them can be trained, but you just you just have to understand what the issue they have is and figure out the right way to train them and that's why sometimes like we do like those little like when i when i repeat often like make the play, make your player co-creator of the world those are little like, sentences you can try to use to explain they're kind of like a mantra you know like hmm. the the player don't ask questions to the gm you know those are like they might it might hmm. seem harsh but like it they're kind of like a something that's going to stick into their mind hmm. like mantra and then they can understand and they can work from there you know hmm. And it can be fine to have a couple of those in your group because, you know, if you've got a group with all of the characters have, like, strong convictions and slightly disparate goals, that, that can be a problem. If you don't want that inter-party conflict or if your players aren't good at playing that inter-party conflict with, you know, 
knowing that it's a character and not you know you, you've mentioned yeah. that before in a video um so it, it can be fine but if you have a table of nothing but those yeah, yeah. then you as a gm the world's going to constantly be acting on the players and not the other way around but we, we also have you know like it's slim picking like for a good role player so at some point you have to you have to take the you have to make the best yeah. of the people you got yeah yeah you have to you have to uh will you you have to have how low are you willing to lower your expectations you know yeah yeah the better you know you're the player the better will understand what the, your preps need to involve that is very true because of this uh the best of my games i've been with friends that people i just associate with true gaming yeah i like that's that's what i prefer to do my gaming as well also like i find like because of who i am with uh rendos i have to uh self-censor a lot <laughs> just when i talk and I, that really killed the fun for me yeah so... like when um you know oh god that annoying thing bit bit of paizo hate here uh they buckled to the mob and were like okay mm -hmm. there we're not gonna have any oh, more are, slavery we're, we're not gonna have any more slavery in our games and it's like what but they've slavery is bad though and they portrayed it as bad so we we can't fight villains anymore and you know i hate having to tiptoe it's like as a gm i'm going to play horrific people you want to beat up you mm -hmm. need to know that i am not those horrific people <laughs> i'm playing the role of them <laughs> yeah and uh anything else you see that you need to be addressed yeah, let's see um Mark Man say like uh, you, you can make an interesting city by giving it a history with more than one guiding force in the history like a mining town that also have like a massive winery. Yeah, that's Ooh. a good uh, that that's 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 good idea to have. Mm -hmm. But again, like I often say, you don't need like as a GM, you don't need to have all the answer up front. It can like uh, you, you can like make it up like yeah, there's a big uh, pretty big mining uh, community there. And then at some point later on, yeah, there's also like this big winery and you know mm -hmm. If it's not relevant at the moment, you don't need to know. You don't need to. A lot of what yeah. I say is not like, and and uh, yeah, that's that's part of like being a real being able to think on your feet. Yeah, and you you can just sort of think logically. You know, this mining town. Well, if they're just a mining town, they have to get their food from somewhere. Are they growing it themselves? Are they growing it? Are they getting it imported? If they're getting it imported, you know, then you can have, you know, a plot hook be that the supply chains are breaking down and, you know, they can't do mining because nobody has any food and their miners are all, you know, starving. But, you know, yeah, it's it's just infinite. It's just from, from one thing, you just take that and apply, you know, just apply logic. Just think about it. And the, the more time you spend thinking about it, you'll have an infinite number of things. As long as you're not telling, you know, you don't use all this prep to sit down at your players and go, okay, there's this mining town and the miners are doing this. This is what they mine. They're, they're having issues, right? No, they have to figure that out for the play. Yeah. L, it's a uh, hotline Miami, not a uh, moonline Miami. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not a role-playing game exactly. It's really an action game. <laughs> Uh, Mar Hockman also says, yeah, it's weird trying to have a game where the villains don't actually commit crimes. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned something in the notes for this yeah. that we, we need to do an episode about villains. On making villains. Yeah, that's absolutely yeah. something that we're going to do. Uh, not next week. Be... Because mm. Mm. Next week, we're going to talk about uh, character creation. Yep. Uh, different way the different system does it. Uh, character, like making character build, li life system, stuff like that, like rolling randomly. Uh, I think that's going to be an interesting show as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very behind in the chat there. Like I'm scrolling down to see if something <laughs> uh, needs to. Uh, if you see something, uh, go ahead. Oh, I think I'm catching up now. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. You should be comfortable with the political situation, business uh, rival at the macro level, the criminal element, and the economy uh, driver at the macro level. Yeah, when I say like, that's what I mean by uh, when I say like build in uh bake in like conflict in the world you know but stay very high level that's uh, uh, like uh maybe you can think of like oh there's this faction and this faction and maybe a third element at a third rail that is uh kind of like causing trouble in doing that you don't have to go in all the specific of it but like that's when you create your world design you know it's this world and like it's modern day uh la and uh, there's uh, there are like a uh, 
this happening and those factions are like, you know, it's medieval time and there's like a, this noble family that is trying to usurp the throne, uh, mm. doing machination, you know, you don't go, to, you don't need to go in all the specific, but that's like, mm. that's kind of the level of thinking I like, I, I, I think is useful in the prep because it gives the impression that the world is alive, the world has a purpose, the, the world exists for its own sake. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, the characters start knowing the big issues, but if they try yep. to tackle the big issues immediately, that you know they're going to get interrupted. If you're in a modern setting and you, uh, let me let me be careful here. If you're in a modern setting and you try to tackle the problems at the top, the macro level of that setting, there will be you know local police, yep. local you know they're going to be the micro level things, but you don't need to know, you know, when you're prepping the game, you don't need to know the names of every police officer. You don't need to know the names of every gang member in there. You just, you know, yeah. Armin said, it's not about the rules, about gaming. Thanks, man. That That's what uh, I wanted to do with those streaming things. That's why I invented, I invented Tyler there. Like I wanted to not go so deep in the weed, not go into the little detail and mini shell, but like this game and that game. I wanted to talk about more like a general idea. Mm -hmm. yeah i'm glad you like it um yeah and like i said we, we're gonna get like you know we, we're still gonna get our groove <laughs> over mm -hmm. time we're, we're beginning to work together uh, i think that's uh we're about to wrap it up now yes yeah i think so um let's see uh, anything else you want to add mm, crap phone prob somebody probably a ton, or but... people who misgender order yeah that's like a <laughs> the really yeah yeah. That, I, that's, that's the thing problem. to me. You know, I I have people that play in my groups that are you know way more left leaning than I am, or you know have different politics than I am. But you know that means they 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 like fighting villains. You know that that's mm -hmm. the thing. You know we have we because there are universal evils. You know, killing innocents, burning down towns. You know the the that sort of stuff that regardless of your politics unless they are just insanely ass backwards personally you know you can what get let's, behind let's do the villain stream soon like a uh, character of creation next week then we after that, next yeah the, the yeah. villain stream yeah because yeah because yeah, all i was reading these comments and i was like uh oh these are all great comments on villains and i'm going yeah. to talk about them for yes i do have things to add but if i add them we're gonna be here all night. yeah we're gonna do a stream about that i think it's gonna be a very good one mm. uh Anything you want to add? Plug yourself, your channel, Flames on oh, One. Yes. Um, so I am I, I'm making videos more frequently now. Um, I've I've sort of got the whole thing set up. I'm doing uh I do stuff on historical European martial arts, uh, and how that sort of ties into um you know, most tabletop games, um fantasy things. <laughs> um uh <laughs> I, I do a lot of stuff on Pathfinder, so that's why you hear me talking about it a lot. It's the system I played most, so sorry if I if I rattle your ears off about the, the gloriousness of, of the D20 system. Now, uh, um, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's a variety channel. I, I talk about whatever the hell I talk about, I want to talk about, so watch a couple of my videos, and if you enjoy them, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And also, you've been, like, on a... You've, you've been doing, like, those... Uh actual play session if people want oh to god yeah action. jesus yeah that's so yeah. true uh yeah check out my actual plays with uh abraham over at uh, talking about games uh right now i'm playing with uh rick uh from 28 millimeter rpg we just started a uh, sort of um like sword art online dot hack uh style game set where we role play ourselves inside an mmo uh so it's very very meta um that's how did it fun. go uh, it went really well. Um, is a it's a very very crunchy, weird system that I didn't. I thought the the mechanics of the system might get in the way of role play, but they kind of really they kind of really didn't. Um, uh, it was it was really quick for us to get into it. It was like a forty five minute session. Um, super fun. It was um, so yeah. Check that out. Um, if you're if you're into that sort of thing. Charlotte is asking you something. Do you have like a lot of the old OGL books, the Thieves World's book, the Wheel of or Wheel of Time? Uh, I have I have most of Wheel of Time. Um, not Thieves World though. Um, uh, yeah, I, ha I do I do have most of most of Wheel of Time. Um, yes, I I'll, I'll do it. Maybe I'll do a book sort of show and tell at some point. 
If I cannot make like both of your friends, what I'm gonna talk about when I talk about <laughs> Uh, I oh God, I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> I know nothing about Buffy. I never watched. I was about to say it's been so damn long since I've seen any yeah. of it. I don't. I don't even know if I would. Uh... <laughs> yeah, my favorite villain is Trains. Yeah, exactly. Train Builder. Like, that's a. Uh, that's what gets me going. All about you know maglev steam trains and uh, you know uh, diesel <laughs> trains. That's that's what we're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's all. The old stream's gonna be about that. Rex still say like uh, this has been a great stream guy thank you very much for joining thank you for everybody that joined us uh, mm. are you going to be on a talking about games channel tomorrow in this conversation no uh, I I, uh, oh, yeah. I have a Pathfinder to run tomorrow oh yeah okay okay mm. and tomorrow yeah. I'm going to be on I'm going to be on the <laughs> on Legend of Myth channel for mm. uh, the formerly known uh, Friday Night Chill stream which is now like a SRS some rando mm. or some rando RPG SRRS some rando R RPG stream that doesn't rule on the song <laughs> but uh yeah so we can see, see me there and other than that like I'm gonna be back on the Tuesday on, on this channel on around lunchtime for under like a little stream there where it's a little more uh, laid back I'm probably gonna play some outline me I me sometime again no, Armand nice. said, I'll check out your channel, your channel, your channel, your channel tonight. I'm impressed uh, with your approach to gaming. That's why I invited him to be a co-host. I thought he was like, he had like a lot of interesting to say. So uh, thanks. Um, Tyler's channel is Flame Zombie ch One. The link is in yeah. the description below. Oh, sorry, yeah. I the channel is just Flame Zombie. If you, whoever's taken Flame Zombie minus the one does not have a channel where they create things. So if you, yeah, you'll, you'll find them. Damn them. Yeah. <laughs> the railroading i did that railroading uh stream on tuesday that's what i was talking about yeah we can, uh, we can we can talk about model trains and um using those in your uh, your your games of course yeah yeah let's say like well you know i'm not i'm not opposed if you want to do like a else on wheel type of game and stuff like that but like <laughs> hey that's your game you do what you want all right i'm gonna wrap it up now i'm gonna end the stream yeah. uh now I'm going to press on the button. I just want to thank everybody that uh, watched live. Thank everybody that watched mm -hmm. on the replay. Thanks, Tyler, for joining. And at the same time, next week, so 2000 EDT, which is 8 p.m. Eastern for American, we're going to have another dice and design. Next week is going to be about character creation. The one after, we already know, is going to be about uh, making good villains. So join us. Uh, and thank you again. Have a good day. Ciao.